Rebecca Vaughn and I'm a student at Northern Arizona University in the Parks and Recreation Management Program. Today I'm going to take you on a small tour of one of my favorite places, Catfish Paradise. I'm a local girl around these parks, so I've grown up coming here, I bring my kids here, we have a great time. This place is known for, obviously, it's great catfish. Ironically though, most fishermen come out here for the largemouth bass. So whether, whatever it is you're looking for, catfish, bass, tilapia, crappie, bluegill, whatever it is, you'll find it out here. It's great fishing, it's a free launch ramp, um, it's beautiful. It's actually in the Havasu National Wildlife Refuge area, so um, it is a protected area for a lot of migratory birds um, that you'll see, and we'll talk a little bit about those later. Um, and it's maintained by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. And U.S. Fish and Wildlife has actually dubbed it a fishing hotspot. So this is the place you want to be. It's kind of secluded. Not a lot of people know about it, but it's an excellent place to get out here, get the family out here. It doesn't cost any money. Just your boat gas and a sandwich, and you can have an excellent day, disconnected from technology, and uh, just enjoying being outdoors in nature. So come along with me. We're going to go ahead in and check out what all Catfish Paradise has to offer. Hey everybody, here we are at these beautiful exhibit signs. Here's a nice map of the Havasu National Wildlife Refuge. All this area here, you can see is where, where it all is in our round up line, which it's hard to see. Here's Catfish, here's where we are. We're kind of in the middle of all this fun. Moving over here, this sign is worth talking about because we have our famous American bald eagle. This eagle actually takes refuge here it's on its migratory pattern. So out here, if you're lucky, you can see one of these eagles. But be careful, that eagle wants the fish we're out here to catch. So that's your competition. We also have falcons, hawks, ravens, owls, all kinds of things that are out here for the fish. If I were a bird, I'd love to live here too. Good eating, good trees, and it's a refuge. So there's a, a few other things on these maps. We have a pop quiz, talks about a lot of our other birds, a lot of the ducks that you'll see out here. I've never once been out here and not seen a duck on the water. That's, that's one of our constants. So these are our beautiful signs. And next we're going to head out to the dock to see what we can see out there. Alright, so here we are at the dock in the launch ramp. We're having to use some creative photography because the wind just picked up really bad around here and I want you to be able to hear me. A lot of people come out here and fish the dock if they don't have a boat, which is perfectly acceptable. That's perfectly legal here. It's free. Um, it's a well-maintained dock. Uh, a lot of things that you catch off the dock are carp, catfish. Some people have caught some soft-shell turtles. Um, you're going to want to throw those guys right back. And um, I've even seen a rattlesnake swimming around out here. So you just really never know what you're going to get. Like I said before, this is this is an excellent place to come out fishing. You never know. Um, a couple of rules to follow. Like a uh, there are catch limits for pretty much every species. You can refer to this book, the 2019-2020 Fishing Regulations Guide. You can get this book anywhere you can buy fishing supplies. And this is going to tell you everything you need to know. It's your fishing bible. So when you're out here, make sure you're properly licensed, uh, you know what your limits are, and you know what you're doing, and you know what you can and can't do, life jackets on boats, etc., etc. Um, if you're over the age of 13, you don't have to wear a life jacket on the boat, but you have to have one on the boat for yourself. Just little things, rules and regulations that you want to make sure to follow. This place isn't manned um, by a fishing game every day, but it's not uncommon to see the rangers out here just kind of checking things out and making sure everybody's compliant. So you'll want to do that. Um, so next, we're going to head out on the boat and see if we can't catch us a fish. Thanks. Here we are out on the Topak Marsh. We're about a half a mile from Catfish. It took us a, just a short drive out here on the boat. We're back in some of the backwaters where there's really good fishing. There's a few entrances onto the marsh, but Catfish is the best way. This is because of the really user-friendly launch ramp, that immaculate dock, and there's even a public bathroom. In addition to being well-maintained, launching into the marsh from anywhere is actually free. But we should also note that while Topak Marsh is free, there's no river access from here onto the Colorado River. So if you want to get onto the Colorado River, you're going to have to go a couple miles up the road to the Topak 66 Marina, where it's not free. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about 
some of the species out here that are heavily sought after by the fishermen. The first one is the crappie. I have a picture here for you. This is a black crappie. Um, out here you can find black or white, but black is way more abundant. It can be found in most of the Arizona warm water reservoirs. They usually travel in schools. They're mature by age two or three. The, their lifespan is around seven years. Uh, to catch these guys, we use lures around submerged brush piles, so basically everything you see around me. And the record for this, for these guys, is four pounds, 10 ounces, and that was in the San Carlos Lake back in 1959. Bag limit for this guy is 25 in a 24 hour period. Because they're so small, there is no uh, length limit, but you gotta use common sense. You don't, if you pull one in and it's real tiny, you might wanna throw them back and give them a little bit longer to, to mature down there. So that is the black crappie. Moving on, we're gonna talk about the infamous catfish. So here we have a picture here. Um, this is where our catfish paradise got its name. Um, this catfish is a channel catfish, but there's actually several different types of species around here. This is just a common one. Um, they're found in most warm water lakes and rivers. Uh, watch them out when you bring them onto the boat because their pectoral and dorsal fins can be really sharp and actually break the skin. Effective baits for these guys is just about anything. Anchovies, hot dogs, popcorn, you name it, they'll eat it. Um, they live to be about 15 to 20 years. And the record in Arizona is a 76.52 pound flathead catfish found in the Bartlett Lake back in 2013. It took that guy 35 minutes to get him on the boat. I can't imagine what that was like. The bag limit for these catfish, and actually catfish of any species, is 10 total. So if you catch a channel catfish and a flathead catfish, that counts as two. You can't do 10 of each. Um, good eating here. A lot of people like to fry these up and eat them for dinner. Moving on, we're going to talk about the most sought after fish out here, and that is the largemouth bass. Um, these are warm, warm water fish that likes clear water and structure and cover. Again, basically anything you see around me, all these tulies provide a lot of cover. We have a lot of down trees out here, and that's where they kind of hang out. Uh, they move to the deeper water during the day and then return to the shallower waters at night to, feed, to eat. Um, they congregate, like I said, around submerged trees, aquatic vegetation, underwater drop-offs, a lot of those around here. Um, the state record for the bass is 16 pounds, 7 ounces, and the world record is 22 pounds and 4 ounces. Their life spans about 16 years. They stay together when they're younger, but as they get older, they're kind of more solitary. You kind of find them alone, not in schools. Bag limit for these largemouth bass are uh, 6 in a 24-hour period, and they have to be 13 inches in order to take them off the water. So you wanna be careful that you're not taking any, any real juvenile largemouth off because we gotta, we gotta let them grow and re reproduce a little bit. So those are the three fish um, that we'll concentrate on today. There's a lot of other things, a lot of other fish you can find out here, tilapia, sunfish, um, bluegill. These are just the most common. Fishing out here is fun on any day. You never know what you're gonna get. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of birds out here that are also looking for these fish. Um, just since we've been out here, we've already seen tons of ducks and uh, crane and some geese and they're out here for the same reason we are. They're definitely our fishing competition. So now I'm going to cut away to a clip of uh, me and my assistant Sam fishing earlier where we fought, caught a beautiful largemouth bass. Okay. So what do we have here? Largemouth bass. How big do you say that is? Just over a pound, right at it. All right, let's get up close. See those nice green colors? Come this way a little bit. All right. So we're catch and release people, so we're gonna get this guy back in the water as quickly as we can. So that was quite the largemouth bass that we caught earlier, and we were really lucky to get that guy out here while we had the camera on. So now we're going to head back into the catfish up to the launch, and we'll wrap it up from there. Thanks. All right, everybody, that wraps up our tour for the day. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, a few things to recap. We, we caught a beautiful largemouth bass. We talked about the catfish and the crappie and all the birds that are out here that want to fish right along with you. Um, another interesting note that I didn't mention yet was that 
The last record set here out on the Topak Marsh was in 1952, which is at 67 years ago, and a man from Barso pulled off a 35-pound catfish right out, right out from here. So that's really awesome. We haven't had a record in a long time, so maybe we'll have one soon. Like I said, it's a great place to come, bring the family, the kids, everything's free. There's no reason not to come out here, spend the day. We're, we're right off of Route 66. We're 20 miles from a uh, historic Oatman. Um, we're right next to the 40. We're between Havasu and Needles. It's a great place. Not a lot of people know about it. It's a little diamond in the rough. I'm so glad you came out here with me and saw it today, and I really appreciate it.